Guys, welcome to this bonus episode of Pop Kitchen. We just wanted to catch up because, George, you've now seen Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Exactly. It's now on Disney+. That's Plus. it. So it's just been added to Disney+. Plus. It's available for streaming. And I think me, like a lot of people who didn't catch it first time round, have gone and watched it. I saw it when it came out in cinema. You can catch my full review from a few weeks back, but I wasn't too pleased yes. with it like a lot of people the yes. lucas of warmth yeah I, I think i think things i said was i don't feel cool watching this and i'm really sad because i don't want my films to look like this yes. i think those are some of my main points that i made but george um yeah how do you feel about it so basically i agree with everything you said for me it wasn't like i came out and thought god rub my, rubbing my hands going, what a dumpster fire god what a, what a huge car crash i actually found the whole experience really really depressing yeah and, and actually just sad yeah because i was watching for me Amman quantumania is like that entire film from as soon as they go into the quantum realm from then on in the whole film misunderstands what ant-man is the, the, why the audience is here to see Ant-Man. It misunderstands the talent of Paul Rudd. Yeah. It misunderstands our investment in the story. And it just goes in a direction. And like you said, like eight minutes into the film, yeah. it just- Eight minutes. It just goes into this- the Whoa, we're yeah. falling in. And it goes into this direction. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, the horse has bolted. And I have to sit here now for the remaining two hours and watch something that I think is just so misjudged. Yeah. You, you, what I mean by what I just said is that like, it's clear, I, I felt like no one- the film, no one who made this film wanted to make the, this version of this film. No. I have a feeling that there was an, a vague idea for Ant-Man 3 and then the top level of Marvel said, we need to introduce Kang and we're introducing him in this film. And every single- They'd already written this yeah, multiverse Any line. single sort of character trait or unique uh, things that are unique to the world of Ant-Man, to the identity of Ant-Man, were completely overwritten to serve the need to bring in Kang. So my point is, you have the first two Ant-Man films, which I, I liked Ant-Man 1, Ant-Man 2, I think is completely forgettable. forgettable yeah, completely boring, forgettable. Yeah. But like, I like Paul Rudd. I like the character of Scott Lang. I loved him in Endgame. I loved that, yeah. that whole role there. And, you know, like, whether you, however we feel about those first two films, they had a setting. It was San Francisco. It was smaller stakes, no pun intended. Um, you had, you know, uh, Louise... Um, um, What's the, what's the the actor's name? Michael Pena, yeah. playing, uh, and you know T was it T I or T Pain or T I T I and, yeah, and that Edgar Wright cutting style that we yes. remember that like so I told this guy and he's yeah. like hey you gonna do that and it's, it's kind of like and, yeah. fun and loose and at, at its worst it was like a little bit annoying and low stakes and a little bit boring but like it was like that was the world you'd created mm. and they've just wiped that clean and gone right we're gonna bring in. Uh, a character who you have no real attachment to, Cassie, played by the third actress who's played yeah. that character. I've I've no attachment to Cassie as a character. It's a byproduct of the time that's. We're also making you. Um, we're also uh, focusing a lot of this on Janet Van Dyne, Michelle Pfeiffer's character, who was yeah. introduced at the end of the second. Uh, uh, f it was part of the second yeah. Ant Man film, which is so forgettable. And we haven't. It's been five years since the last Ant Man film came out, right? So you're leaning on two characters we really don't have a strong attachment mm. to. And everything that made Ant Man interesting, which is him in the real world, going down and being small and being big. It's basically it's, no longer relevant. It's no longer small. relevant because in the quantum realm, anything can happen. And everything was big anything, compared to their scale. It's all, it's all irrelevant. Yeah. And, um, you know, Michael Douglas is just there on f for the ride and you just get to the quantum realm. And it's a bit like we were saying uh, in the other thing about Fast X being like, well, there's no logic, so you can just, you know, do what you want. And yeah. it's the same thing in the quantum realm. It's like, well, it's the quantum realm. Anything can happen. And as, there, as an audience member, I'm like, well, that means I have no idea what the stakes are. Yeah. You can be, can you go big? Can you go small? It's just gloopy if I, nonsense. If I fall there, do I take damage or will my suit yeah. just bounce me off it? Is, is, there it another, is there another level below the quantum realm? Yeah. Can, I go, can I go big? Like it really it just was quite dull. The whole I found the whole thing dull. And also the fact is, I don't think visiting the quantum realm for two hours is enjoyable. No. I think the quantum realm should be used in short bursts and be like just crazier. As mm. soon as they started talking to people, I was like, mm. so basically it's like the real world in that there are civilizations and there are bars and there are cafes and there Bill are- Bill Murray doing the- Oh the my God. Trying to do the Jeff Goldblum thing from the yeah. Ragnarok, but just not- and it's like, oh, um, here's a, yeah, here's a, a rebellion and stuff. So I'm like, so all the stuff we kind of get in all the other Marvel films. But you know what it same. is? It could have been any planet. It, it could have been any other film. planet. Exactly. Yeah. As soon as you say to yourself, oh, here's the story. Um, uh, um, Scott and his friends get teleported into space and it's a space film. And you're like, yeah. Same thing exists. It's not, that's not interesting. And, the and there is no story. The story is 
they're over there, we're over here. We must get, we must find them so we can get back home. The people just saying, we've got to find Scott and Cassie. We've got to find them. That's not a story. And meanwhile, we, we see Kang in the first, first scene of the film, in the cold open where he comes in through the, the quantum realm. And then the rest, half the film is people going, it belongs to him. I will show you to him. him. He like, is here. Yeah, it's yeah. Kang. We all know it's Kang. Yeah. He's in the trailer. He's on the yeah. poster. He's at the beginning of the film. There's just nothing. And then the the Modoc thing. Oh, oh Corey Stoll. Remember, I told you I was like, there was a there was a, a decision with the design of a character that yeah. I cannot, I could not believe was yeah. approved. I, I think I think that is just completely ridiculous, and it's just laughable. It's, it's right. the worst CG I've seen since. But even Angley's not. The, but even the concept. It's not even just the, yeah. the, the like the CG. It wasn't it's threatening. Like, it wasn't no. menacing. It wasn't funny. It's a minion. It wasn't. It, it was a minion. It was so uncompelling in every single yes. way. And then there was not a single vector with which it, it was trying to, which you think it succeeded. Yeah, it didn't engage in any single way. And then you have this kind of like redemption bit where they try and make him funny and interesting. I was just like, oh, I really, really don't care. You just and like whatever, like sort of, uh, however impressed you were with him, Corey Stoll as a villain in Ant Man One, just yeah. completely ruins that. I just think that. I th- and I, I, re- I felt really sorry for Paul Rudd because Paul Rudd is really trying in yeah. this and he's trying everything. And uh, yeah, it, all the things you said in your review, people running around a soundstage looking you can bewildered. Tell they just don't know where I, they are and I what they're I couldn't doing. care okay, less so you're about- you're running away from yeah. this thing now. Uh, go guys, yeah. And but- I couldn't care less about the gloopy design of this world. It was just lamp. nonsense, yeah. nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. Like silly Doctor Who level kind yeah. of space aliens. Uh, and I had the worst of Doctor Who. I the guess worst. I, I think yeah, it's even insulting to Doctor Who. Yeah, to say to say that. Um, and also, like, there's a scene where like Kang and, and Scott are like talking, and I'm like, I just like Kang. I'm aware is a huge villain, and I just don't believe that Ant Man is, is is a hero capable of fighting him. There's no point where I thought, mm. oh, it's so glad that Ant Man's here to, to to fight him. It it it, it, yeah. it doesn't do a service to the traits that made Ant Man a proper hero. Both of them have plot armor as yeah. well, which I find just to be quite frustrating when you come to the end of a, a fit or a fight scene between two main people. And then also, um, I, I'm, I, that film has just kept me very confused about who, how, and what Kang is. Yes. I really, I know they did that bit where they flashed back to uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and him, like it working yeah. together. But there's so, there are so many lines which are, I am this, I was this, I will be this. Yeah. And I find that very confusing to know what version of you am I speaking to? And then yeah. they have scenes where I see hundreds, thousands, hundreds yeah. of thousands of them, which I understand is cool from one perspective, but it's like, who do I latch onto here? Can you can you snap this Kang's neck and he's just gonna yeah. be there anyway? Did this Kang die? Did this Kang Did die? Did this Kang die? Does it matter that this Kang died? Is where's like, the one from Loki? Is that the is I that the OG? Lo- is that the OG Kang? Because that 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 scene in Loki was while much more entertaining. Was, was was still very confusing. But yes. I give you a pass because you're doing a very elusive introduction. Yes. I'm always like, okay, you can be a little bit confusing. You yeah. have my attention. I'm engaged. Yeah. It's a big bad. Now you give me a whole film. I still don't know who, what, when, how yeah. Kang is, and that's I'm just a bit like I what don't a, really what a waste. Of- I don't know. I don't know where Kang's heading, where he's going to be, what he's trying to do. This film also ends, uh, you, can't, you can't completely remove it because it ends basically the way it began, which is like, back in the real world, yeah. I'm Scott Lang, everything's fine. Oh, Kang's there. It's not like a, oh my God, Kang is coming. He's like, okay, uh, everything's normal. And Kang still exists, but they just there's just more of them. Did they kill the thing? I, I just... The post-credits, you see all the post-credits scenes yeah, with, with the millions of them. The millions yeah. of Kang. Yeah. I just, um, it, was just, it was just a waste of, uh, of a film. I just thought this is, yeah, misunderstood exactly what... I'm not saying the Ant Man films were great, but you've no. just taken. This could have been any hero doing anything at any yeah. time. So you know, devoid of any interest, and I just found it so sad and depressing. You know how um, just like about Marvel and because uh, the the box office takings for a lot of the films in Phase Four have been poor. So with Doctor Strange, Ant Man. Mm. Um, Black Panther? That probably no, okay. Black Panther did well. Uh, but what's funny is that Guardians 3 just came out and we reviewed that yeah. uh, the other week. Which we've that, got a lo- we'll check, go, go through the emails in the, the main episode. We, are, like, we, we, got, we, will, of, we got loads of, uh, got loads of really great feedback from it. But um, that film, Guardians, has had a really strong second and third weekend, which shows that people are not fatigued with comic book content. No. It's not. 
It's just about the quality. And I yes. really just don't think people want. You know what's funny is also um, when I when I when I saw Eternals, I gave it a really hard time for being boring. But like, little did I know what yes. was coming. I, I think I would take any Eternals over this. Hundred percent. Eternals at least was trying <laughs> something. Different. At least was filmed in the real world, yeah. with natural light. <laughs> for God's sake. And yeah, like we just really didn't know what was coming. And I think, well, I, I I don't think people are fatigued by comic book content. I think it's never been more popular. Yeah. Like a lot of my friends who aren't so super into and be like, oh, I just feel like the Marvel thing's gone, really starting to run dry. And I'm like, I actually just think the recent films are bad. Yeah. And you're just, it's only as good as the last one. And Guardians, I yeah. think, is doing very well. I think also what Guardians shows is that, you know that feeling people are having when they leave Guardians because it has that sense of finality, yeah. an ending. I feel like saying to Marvel, that feeling people have now, the opposite of that is what people are experiencing with the rest of your films. Yeah. So you have a film which ends, has a, has a conclusion, draws things to an emotional close, and people Stakes. are leaving feeling jubilant, going, oh, wow, I've seen the end of a concert. Yeah. I've come to the end of the thing. That was great. And they're leaving, they, word of mouth is spreading, they're going back to see it again. Mm. The opposite of that is this, this just perpetually running story with no stakes that has mm. a very vague intent. And that's how people felt with that man Just like, what? I don't, what, how am I supposed to feel here? You, you're clearly, you're not committing to anything because you want this thing to run and run, up, run on. I, I, I'm not to <laughs> throw Doctor Who under the bus again, but that's the reason why you and I kind of did stop watching Doctor Who once we got to our late teens. Because we were like, this is just going on forever yeah i can't i can't keep getting i can't keep getting attached and wondering what's going to happen when i know this yeah. show goes yeah. on and i think we both just kind of fell out of it for, for whatever reason because of that i can't i don't i don't think marvel's ever gonna stop i think i wouldn't be surprised if it just never ceases to end and we're taking our kids to see marvel films one yeah. day but yeah i i don't know it needs a really good I, long hard thing i really think I, I i i will be glad to see the back of the multiverse once mm. avengers 5 and 6 is done i also i also think like i could have done with there being like in the sense we're not gonna have any more guardians i think there should have been no more thor i think they should have made they thor love and thunder yeah. his last one and or like yeah. uh, give it to give that some stakes like to have, have him die well i think he'll die in like one of the Avengers films, yeah, He'll be a martyr, I know. Yeah, but there yeah. you go. But like, also, like, um, like, we just need to start re rebalancing the books. Mm. Kevin Feige, okay. Well, we got we got Blade, we got X Men coming. Well, we, X Men isn't confirmed. Um, X Men we're not having until after Avengers Six. So so how, how do you know they're not going to come in? With, because they've with, got they. Yeah, if, but they'll they'll come in for the fight, George. Okay, and Hugh Jackman will be there, uh, and Deadpool. And Deadpool. Yeah, sure. But, then, <laughs> so but, this, is, but this is still... The Michael I, 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 no, I, th I, I think that they've committed to doing this like Kang and the multiverse and they're going to build the se Secret Wars and the Kang Dynasty. And after that, I think they're going to restructure the MCU around X-Men and Fantastic Four because Probably. that will be brand properties that, that by that point, audiences wouldn't have seen for 10, 15 years. Yeah. And by that point, audiences will really have been fatigued with the existing heroes. It's just like, you know, change of the season rest put the other guys on the bench mm. center around fantastic four and x-men um but i read it it was an interesting point in a variety i think it was an article in variety or hollywood reporter that was like you do realize that m the problem with marvel at the moment is that they've set up like did i say this with you last week was it no, well they've they've they basically set up six different sequels for films that we we they haven't announced. So you know, Kevin Feige gets down on the stage yeah. and says that these are all the films we have coming out. We we know what's coming out for the next two, th three years, right? Yeah. Three four years. But you've got the bit at the end of Doctor Strange where Charlie Theron turns up. <laughs> yeah. You've got the bit at the end of Eternals where Harry Styles turns up. Yeah. You've got the bit at um, the end of Thor where uh, Brett Goldstein turns up as Hercules, yeah. right? You've got. Uh, well, they take just take those three as an it example. It really makes it look like they just come up with this at the last minute. Yeah, it really looks pretty poor from them yeah. to be doing that. Make um, promises and then just leave them alone. So it is. Yeah, it's good as the last one you saw. Guardians three, great. Ant Man three. I, I think in another years. world where we weren't sitting down to talk about films every week, I would very happily have just cooled all yeah. the Marvel stuff. But don't get me wrong, I love covering it. Yeah. It's an interesting thing to do. But I would have really happily been one of those people that just goes. I'm just going to take a huge break from this yeah. and turn up when I want. Like a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I haven't seen all of them. I've seen some. I tune in for a bit. I, and, and it just yeah. feels like homework, the amount of TV shows I have to watch. Like I've got the, I've got the Marvels coming out this year in October or November, oh, whenever okay. that's out. And I really just can't be asked to see it. Yeah. And it's, I actually thought Captain Marvel was a decent film. It was fine. It was, it was fine. Yeah, did you watch Miss Marvel? No, no. So this is the thing. It's like I have to watch. Do I have to watch a TV no, show? No, you don't. To understand. You don't. I'm just getting really weird. And then like Loki season two is coming out, and I'm like, I liked. I I really had low expectations. I didn't want to see Loki, and then, it, and then it surprised me, and I really mm. enjoyed it. Do, am I, are we going to do more? Is that going to be good again? Mm. Like, I don't know if we even want to comment on this, but there is this whole uh, controversy running with uh, Jonathan Majors at the moment, and they're yeah. apparently very much. Uh, he's been. Uh, don't, we don't know if he's being. There's cut a court from date set for June. That's why I know. 
Yeah, and um, he's been cut from marketing materials and film descriptions. So for Ant-Man Quantumania, he's not mentioned in the description of the film. It's, he, he's uh-huh. being, they, they've removed Kang and they've just put a, a, a real threat, a huge mm-hmm. threat. Um, and I don't know if they're priming to recast, which would be unlikely because we've seen 100,000 yeah. versions of him, or if they... Or he's he, a Doctor Doom or just... Or, yeah, or he just basically ends up retreating and the real big bad is something else. But it, it's, uh, controversy aside, what, uh, <laughs> what an irritating shame to have to have set this up and have it all be changed. Yeah, in an already minute. messy environment. Purely from looking at a Marvel selfish perspective of their story, it's a shame that that would have to yeah, yeah. happen and just sort of ruin anyway. it. If you guys have caught up with Ant Man Quantumania and you want, uh, you disagree with us, have we missed it? I don't think. Or yeah, just Marvel thoughts on Marvel as a thoughts, whole. Yeah, let think us know what you think about where Marvel is right now. Yeah. We, you and I, over the course of this podcast, have really gone through Yo-yo. different waves. We yeah. are defending Marvel, then we saw Eternals and Shang-Chi, and we've gone through Apathy, and then we got reinvested with it, and now yeah. we're kind of bewildered. Like most we really people. are as, as good as its last film and how we feel about it. But there you go, guys. Let's send us your thoughts to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. We hope you enjoyed this bonus piece of content. Don't forget, we post new episodes of the show every single Wednesday, so check that out. See you then.